Hi, uh, we have with us Mr. Rahul Bhutiani of Adani Solar. For those of you who don't know, Adani Solar has quietly become one of the most integrated solar manufacturers in India over the last two or three years. Uh, Mr. Bhutiani heads marketing there and we would love to hear his perspective on how the company has evolved. Mr. Bhutiani, tell us about the big developments at Adani. Sure, thank you. Thank you for uh, having me on your uh, show. The, uh, the background uh, that you just mentioned, it's important to understand this. Uh, solar manufacturing uh, in India has been evolving and uh, like you rightly said, slowly we have uh, focused and moved forward on our vision to become a fully integrated manufacturer. So today we now have not only module and cell manufacturing, which itself is uh, something that India is uh, not very heavy on, uh, but we've also introduced uh, for the first time in India manufacturing of um, uh, ingots and vapors. So that's going a little deeper into the supply chain. Uh, the last step of course or the first step of the process is uh, polysilicon which we will be uh, initiating our progress on that and by 2027 we should have 10 gigawatts of capacity for polysilicon too. Uh, we will progressively increase our capacity on ingot wafer, cell and module, uh, all of it uh, to 10 gigawatts. Uh, what is interesting for us and for the country is that we are not stopping at just backward integration or vertical integration. We are also building the entire ecosystem of ancillary units uh, to feed into the module manufacturing business. Uh, we need, let's say we need solar glass, we need for aluminum frames, we need a back sheet, an EVA. Uh, so all of that, trackers for the solar business, all of that we are creating an ecosystem that will have an equivalent 10 gigawatt capacity for these elements also and at the same geographical co-location, making it maybe the world's only uh, such an ecosystem across, uh, you know, not, not even in China, we would have an ecosystem that has everything manufactured at the same geographical co-location. So, we, uh, our vision is to take it to 10 gigawatts with all of this integrated uh, by 2027. You spoke about cell manufacturing for Topcon. How much of an advantage is that for you now? So, you know, uh, the uh, key element in solar manufacturing is uh, not module manufacturing. Module manufacturing essentially is an assembly line operation. Uh, what is where the technology really matters and where the skill really matters is actually cell manufacturing. And at Adani, we have been very conscious that you really can't be Atma Nirbhar uh, unless you have cell manufacturing in the country. So, uh, when we started our journey six years back, we created an integrated facility of cell and module. We have upgraded this facility in 2022 uh, to Monopark, uh, and that also was again cell and module. And we've just added more capacity, double the capacity, and now we've again set it up as cell and module for uh, Topcon. That is the latest technology in the world uh, right now. How, how difficult is the transition to Topcon from Monopark? Is it very complicated or everybody can do it? No, it's, it's like a separate line, it's a slightly different technology. Uh, but yes, the good thing about Monoperk and Topcon is that a Monoperk cell line can be upgraded to Topcon. So, you know, people who have set up a Monoperk cell line uh, will be able to upgrade it as and when they decide to do it with a small capex addition of a couple of process steps uh, in the cell line. And uh, the same uh, setup that you have or the infrastructure or equipment that you have for Monoperk cell line can also be used for manufacturing Topcon. So, that's the that's the good piece. You have a path for upgrading the existing technology and you don't have to junk it. Mr. Bhutani, we've seen Adani is ranked very high for the last few years in terms of quality parameters. Does that help you a lot in your export markets and does that focus you more on exports? Yes, uh, we've always believed in providing a quality product. We've never cut any corners. We've never uh, relied on any of the, uh, let's say, the cheaper products that one can get, uh, especially from uh, some of the countries abroad. We have focused on creating our own ecosystem, our own manufacturing setup and uh, that has yielded us good results. Over the years, we have remained among the uh, top performers on quality. So, there is a, uh, there is a worldwide uh, recognized platform called PVL and they have a PQP testing. Every year, they release a list of the worldwide which modules are among the top performers on quality parameters. And Adani is proud to be a part of that list for six years in a row. And uh, even this year, we've been recognized, our Monopark product has been recognized as a top performer. We expect to get our uh, Topcon product also included in the next year's rankings. You know, as a company that operates pretty much independently, even though you're part of the Adani group, 
how do you feel about the almm exemption that was removed this year would you look forward to uh, an extension or you would rather not see that so while we are uh, present in both si on both sides of the coin if i may use the term uh, we do uh, we do have a very large developer business and we do have a large manufacturing business so at times there may be a conflict of interest but we are very very clearly independent operations independent companies so uh, from a manufacturing standpoint uh, considering what is going on in the country right now we are very hopeful and uh, we request if at all one can do that to the government to not give the continue the moratorium on allm it should be implemented strictly uh, because otherwise indian manufacturers uh, domestic manufacturers do not have a future in this country with the kind of uh, you know imports that are happening into the country so i think uh, it is essential that we do not have any extension to the uh, you know the almm suspension that the government had announced we should get it implemented again from 1st april if earlier uh, it would be really a a good thing for the domestic manufacturing but if not earlier then at least from 1st april 24 it should get implemented uh, so that there is uh, some protection and some uh, comfort to the domestic manufacturing uh, sector and they are able to survive how do you feel about all the manufacturing capacity that's coming up worldwide including in your export markets as well we hear about the inflation reduction act in the us the european green deal australia also a little bit do you think we're heading for over capacity again in a two or three year, three year period so if you really analyze the capacity uh, that uh, of manufacturing capacity and the installation that is happening every year our manufacturing capacity at almost every stage of the supply chain whether it is module cell wafer uh, polysilicon we are if not more at least double the manufacturing capacity than is required already even without considering the various announcements that have been made in india under the pli or the uh, announcements made in the us under the ira or some other countries like turkey australia like you rightly mentioned some of the european manufacturers even if we ignore all of that we are already at over double the capacity so it's not that we have a reason to expand uh, is just that the capacity that is there right now this excess capacity is all concentrated in one country what the world is trying to do is distribute this capacity in other countries to ensure that you have a supply base outside of uh, just the one country right so that's that's the reason why expansion is happy it's not to meet capacity uh, capacity requirement it's more to distribute or take away the capacity and spread it geographically that's the uh, background now if uh, the number that has been announced and if all of that comes true we are going to see a significant glut if i may use the word uh, across various countries not just china we will have the glut in india we will have the glut in us too so that brings me to the million dollar question are we seeing the bottom yet in terms of the drop in solar prices see the uh, in terms of cost uh, yes we are near the bottom all right so if if i were to look at the polysilicon cost and the where it and where it is right now let's say 10 dollars a kilo in china uh, that is where most companies will see some small profits anything below this there will be capacities that'll go off people will not be able to sustain so the capacities will go up and that will again mean that if capacity reduces prices will rise again so i think this is where we will find uh, some equilibrium anything lower than this and uh, it's not sustainable right so we have hit the uh, bottom i would say but you will see some movements up and down and those are more related to uh, you know price management or people trying to liquidate what they have or trying to survive than anything to do with the real cost of manufacturing and the pricing associated with it are you worried about any dumping any more from other markets because of this glut i think uh, we are already in the midst of it so uh, whether it's dumping or not i would i don't want to get into that discussion but we are seeing a lot of import into india uh, even though we have such a large domestic capacity i don't know why we need to import and the only reason can be that we are able to get it at much lower prices than a domestic manufacturer can afford to provide to the domestic uh, market uh, even at minimal profits so the domestic manufacturing is currently at a threshold where their profits are negligible but they are still not able to price it at a fashion they can compete with the exports and which is why 
uh, I keep, keep talking about ALMM and I keep saying that there is need for it to be brought back at the earliest. Otherwise, we will see a lot of existing capacities in the domestic market go off and a lot of the planned capacities under the PLI may not, may not see the light of day. So, related to this is again, you know, we, we seem to be struggling in India in terms of taking installed capacity additions beyond say 16 gigawatt, 15 gigawatt. Why do you think that's happening? Because we were supposed to be doing 25, 30 and more probably starting now. Right. I, I think, uh, you know, if you just take a simple average, you're right, we need to do about 30, 30, uh, 35 for the balance, 7 years till 2030, if you have to get close to what the Prime Minister has set for us, uh, for the country as a target. Uh, the uh, important aspect of, uh, for, uh, you know, creating renewable capacity is, uh, you know, two main things, I think. One is availability of land, unencumbered land, and uh, for being able to set up these large solar parks. And uh, the second one is whether we have the right, uh, let's say, capacity in the grid. So, whether interconnection is going to be easily available and uh, are we upgrading our grid at the same pace as we are creating more renewable capacity. So, I think these are the two factors that are really affecting the rollout. It's not lack of capacity in the domestic market. It's not lack of manufacturing capacity uh, in any way. So, uh, so, I think it's more to do with the uh, ability for uh, a developer to be able to get unencumbered land for him to be able to set up large, uh, you know, parks and also the interconnect. So, you mentioned land which everybody understands. But tell me, we've seen examples like Australia where rooftop solar has really made huge strides and we're talking about 50% plus share of the grid at times now. Why can't we achieve something even close to that or half of that? No, I think uh, rooftop solar uh, is a very, very important piece in this whole puzzle. Uh, the government has a very beautiful incentive scheme also for uh, residential consumers to uh, install rooftop solar. So, I think it's a brilliant scheme and and uh, Adani has been focusing on building out this uh, business for uh, through its channel partner network. We have a very strong channel partner network across the country, uh, over 30 uh, channel partners in every state that you can think of and uh, making it accessible to all and sundry. Uh, we also believe the government's efforts on making this more easy uh, because only Gujarat and Kerala were doing some real good work on uh, rooftop solar till now because the discoms were committed and they were really making the efforts. But I think the government has created the national portal and that should give a lot of impetus to the, uh, to the rooftop uh, solar scheme. My only humble submission to the government is that the integrity of the scheme should not get diluted through the national portal. Uh, we, ca we now hear that some unscrupulous players are putting up Chinese modules and claiming subsidy, which is not what the government intended in the first place. And uh, we need to be sure that we are able to control this. So, I think uh, time for the government, the MNRE to step in and ensure that uh, such unscrupulous players are taken to task and wrong practices are stopped. Fine. Thanks a lot. On that happy note, we'll take your leave. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.